Hello, my name is Philip Nickerson. I am an engineer uh, in Clarks Harbor, Nova Scotia with my company Aqua Production Systems Incorporated. And we focus on energy efficiency in uh, land-based aquaculture facilities and lobster pounds, fish plants, uh, anywhere that you would pump water or treat water, and mostly uh, seawater. Uh, but some freshwater applications as well. And one of the areas where m a majority of energy savings are available is in the area of heating and cooling water, air cooled chillers uh, for lobster pounds being one area that really needs some attention and is a, a great opportunity for the lobster pound owners, for the refrigeration technicians and uh, an area where there is potential for energy efficiency incentives uh, to help out as well. So I've put together this presentation to deal with that and uh, let's get started. So in this uh, presentation we're just going to talk about the current situation um, what the lobster pound owner would like to see, some of the root causes that uh, I've seen for issues with chiller inefficiencies and unreliability, <coughs> what the answer is to get it done properly, uh, some proof, meaning just a, a few stories of what we have done with the, with the chiller that is now available, and uh, then just a a brief talk about what to do about it as a refrigeration technician where to go and what information is required so the chilling situation it uh, it is uh, a rather abhorrent situation uh, from a numbers perspective or an inefficiency perspective the, there are many lobster pounds which can't get their water down to their desired temperature. Uh, as an engineer looking at this, obviously the equipment wasn't built to do what it is required. As a result, we're seeing frequent failure of the equipment, frequent maintenance of the equipment, high energy consumption, and the lobster pound owner, of course, is seeing large power bills to go with his large maintenance bills. Refrigeration uh, energy costs is one of the larger line items in a lobster pound operation. Uh, part of the re that reason is because the chillers that are so commonly used have such gross inefficiencies. So what do the lobster pound owners want? The real biggest concern is reliability. Uh, equipment fa failures can lead to lost product. Water temperature gets too warm, the, the lobster metabolism starts going up, and the water quality starts going down. Uh, <coughs> they'd also like to see lower energy bills and maintenance bills. Um, and it doesn't hurt when there's an incentive available uh, for energy efficiency like there is in Nova Scotia right now through Efficiency Nova Scotia for example. They would, to m break it down even further, they would like to see adequate water being brought into their pound while their pound is maintained at the desired temperature. So what happens when they can't get to their desired temperature? They can't bring as much water in as they need and they have water quality issues uh, leading them to store less lobster so if they can meet the temperature they can pack the pound full which means they can sell more lobster at its peak price which means increased profits so why are the common water chillers air cooled chillers being used so inefficient well, there's several reasons. One of the most common um, culprits is the evaporator. Often they're not built for 1 degree Celsius. They're built for 10 to 18 degrees, uh, depending which brands they are. 
they're often selected to match the compressor at that 10 or 18 degrees rather than at the 1 degree Celsius water temperature that most pounds would like to see. They're also uh, shell and coil fabrication which means they would require fairly high flow to create any sense of efficiency. Um, with a 10 inch barrel like that you can't uh, get enough turbulent flow at uh, say 100 gallons a minute. You really need to be upwards of 200 even closer to 300 to get the full efficiency that you can out of them. Um, and with that shelling coil you're also looking at very long coils uh, somewhere in the range of 150 to 200 feet which means your compressor has to suck the the liquid into the evaporator and through that 160 foot coil and evaporate it and suck that gas back to the compressor you end up with a lot of friction loss doing that which makes the compressor work harder and less efficient so the second culprit would be the compressor itself an air conditioner will not do this job efficiently it's just not rated uh, to have an evaporator temperature of 1 degree Celsius. It's rated for, again, 10 to 18 degrees C, where its sweet spot would be, or its peak efficiency. So the compressor needs to be selected to match the operation operating temperatures. And that's just refrigeration 101. Um, operations. Um, I've seen some chillers set up so because of the problems with the evaporator and compressor they've been set up so that the condenser has a higher pressure in order to get the suction pressure higher so because the, of the low suction pressure the technician then is forced to run the chiller with a higher condensing pressure which higher condensing pressure means more amps required uh, means the compressor is working harder. The low suction pressure means the compressor doesn't get uh, the vapor it needs to cool uh, to cool itself. Uh, and that leads to both poor performance and eventually failure uh, due to the overheating. So what is the answer? Well, uh, in Nova Scotia now we have available shell and tube evaporators built for lobster pounds rather than shell and coil so the advantage is you get an increased surface area without your friction loss you can build them to handle whatever flow rate uh, you want to throw at it uh, we've run them as low as one gallon a minute and still been able to be uh, operating efficiently um, the other secret is we can customize it to temperature and pressure so at one degree Celsius the surface area requirement is not the same as 18 degrees Celsius so this can be built right into the evaporator uh, as I've said we cut down the friction losses by using shell and tube so you end up with about an 18 foot run 18 to 25 foot run rather than a 160 foot run um, and you also get a much more stable efficient operation because of all these changes there's no fla uh, gas flashing happening when they're set up right this way no liquid sloshing back it, it just eliminates a lot of the issues so this custom design for lobster pans um, because of that we've used PVC shell titanium tubes uh, so all the wetted parts do not corrode uh, as an engineer I can match your evaporator compressor performance to the target temperature of the lobster pan 32 to 35 degrees Fahrenheit and when these units are running the compressors are cool you can put your hand right on the head of them they're just uh, kind of lukewarm to touch for the most part and uh, running very efficiently uh, that would be evidence of that and we've also been doing some work with putting uh, variable speed drives on the compressors and had some very successful results uh, leading to even further energy savings on these units. 
and in the areas where you might have a say a groundwater well with lots of water at a low temperature 10 degrees to 20 degrees a water cooled option will also help your efficiency in the summer <coughs> So what kind of uh, experiences have we had? Uh, Gidney Fisheries uh, in Matagan area installed two of these units, two 15 horsepower units, on a new pound that they built next door to their older pounds. Almost identical sizing and equipment except for the old pound has four 12 and a half horsepower chillers uh, from a competitor. So 50 horsepower on the old pound, 30 horsepower on the new pound. The 50 on the old runs steady, doesn't shut off, does not reach temperature. The 30 horsepower on the new pound, cycling on and off, brings the pound down to temperature. As a result, the water quality is better, more lobster can be stocked in there. Um, and so Bruce Gidney there is just thrilled with his... Uh, results he's getting on this <coughs> on this pound and that's really what we want to do is make these lobster pound operators be able to focus on putting their lobster in and knowing it's safe and reliable and that will be there when they want to sell it at the price they want to sell it at so that's a 50 percent energy reduction right there as well saving him a lot of uh, electrical cost so the next one isn't a lobster pound, it's a halibut hatchery, Scotian Halibut Limited, where at one point there was 10 chillers and uh, 75 horsepower worth of chilling happening. And that was reduced down to 5 units and 40 horsepower. We couldn't quite get it down uh, to 50% in horsepower numbers just due to the way it was laid out, it's more than one system operating. And another big advantage for them was we were able to go from a system where 50 gallons per minute was the acceptable minimum for the chillers down to a 5 gallon a minute minimum uh, where you still get stable efficient operation. And there's another lobster pan I've been working with, uh, I didn't put their name in here, just because we haven't signed any uh, deals yet with them but they're looking at up to 70 percent energy reduction and part of the reason there is because the existing equipment is operating so far out of range um, there's 20 chillers on the site 11 of them are well well below the manufacturer's minimum suction pressure range um, so the efficiency is there. You might be having a COP of one and a half, maybe two, and other things that they're uh, other things are doing with the way they're pumping the water into these chillers is also uh, just adding to the power bill more than anything. So I, I would say a good assumption is uh, the average lobster pound in Nova Scotia we can reduce the energy for chilling. Uh, between 40 and 70 percent. So if you have a a customer with air-cooled chillers, um, what's your next step? Well hopefully this uh, video has educated you to some of the uh, errors that have been made with chillers in the past and some of the opportunities now uh, to remedy that. Um, I have an offer for you here where if you go out and uh, get the following information listed there from A to F and email it to me at that email address I'll take a look at it uh, from that information I can get a fairly accurate idea of what the current efficiency of the equipment is and uh, respond to you whether it's worthwhile looking further if there would be a good payback on it or not. And if you're in Nova Scotia, I can also give you an indication of whether Efficiency Nova Scotia might be interested in seeing a proposal on, on helping out there and providing an incentive to do the project. Um, 
so there's the offer um, feel free to also send any further questions about uh, air cooled chillers or water cooled to that email address and uh, we'd love to hear from you and help you out with that thank you for uh, listening <laughs>